Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back for another Total War video with the Terminator. And today we're doing a first 20 turns in Divide et Impera with the Suebi faction, a Germanic faction. Now, I did a poll this past weekend uh, for which faction to do in this video, and a lot of people said, oh, we want to see more Hellenic factions. And that's totally fine, guys. Don't worry. Um, I am going to do more Hellenic factions, including Macedon and Rhodes, a lot of factions that people have requested. But today, I wanted to do something a bit different. I wanted to do a Germanic faction because uh, they're very interesting uh, start positions as well. Very difficult start positions, depending on how you go about it. And uh, Suebi is definitely one of those kind of factions where you really need to think about how you want to start off your campaign, which way you want to expand and etc. So it's, it should be a very interesting video. If you are, are a big fan of the Germanic factions, then hopefully you'll learn uh, a bit about how to play them or how I would play them anyway. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the fourth video in this series. I've done Rome, Carthage, Epirus, and today we're doing uh, Suebi. So I really hope you enjoy it, guys. Give it a like if you do. Drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. Obviously, I'm very responsive with the comment section, so I'll, I'll get back to you right away. Let me know what faction you want to see next, guys, especially. Um, and let's get this started. All right, guys. So we are the Suebi, and we start off with one settlement, Lupfordum. A very nice little settlement, actually, that you can easily defend against uh, attack. So um, we're going to try and build this up as soon as possible. But in terms of how I would go about expanding and securing your borders, etc., you, you really, in my opinion anyway, you really need to play the diplomatic game here. You can obviously do this anyway. You can try and secure your eastern borders and push west, or you can secure your northern borders and push south. It's totally up to you how you really want to go about this, because it's kind of an open playing field here. But how I'm going to do it is I'm going to try and attack the Boyai here, take Kasurgis from them, because they have another settlement here, Istros as well. So I'm going to take this settlement, Kasurgis. It's a big, big city, as you can see here. I'm going to take Kasurgis. And we're going to liberate it. So we're going to liberate it and give it to another allied faction um, to essentially secure our southern border here. So we don't need to worry about it. We have the uh, Lugaz here, which I'm also going to try and get a non-aggression pact and befriend, essentially. We, we have uh, these guys up here and the Heraskaz as well. So the, the main kind of focus I'm going to try and uh, achieve by the end of the 20 turns with this faction is to expand north. So I'm going to go after Rugion, Ascalculus, and Vistula because all these cities together will unite my province. Um, I feel like anyway, with any start of a campaign, if you can realistically achieve uniting your province, uh, you're, you are one step ahead of most other factions that you might come up against, right? So that's that's what I'm going to recommend you do here. It might be the safer option, but I think it's a it's a fun option as well. You know, you're liberating a city. Um, you 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 will likely have a multi front war with these guys and possibly this guy as well. So it's going to be a bit tricky. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send my spy up in this direction to meet another faction here. I think it's the Kimbras who, if these guys declare war on me, I'm going to wrangle into the war with, basically. So I'm going to send the spy to meet him, possibly meet another one here as well, and then come down south to meet here, uh, another faction. And, you know, by doing that, essentially, you're trying to make friends. You're trying to get a few different allies that can help you against the war against this faction here. So, you know, if you're fighting a multi-front war, which is very possible when you have a one-settlement start, you can absolutely do that. You can pay, you, you have a big coffer here. You can pay other factions to help you against an enemy. So that's uh, what I'd recommend doing here. And that's what we're going to be doing in this first 20 turns. We're going to be taking out the bo boy eye here. We're going to be expanding north, taking out some nice cities, uh, actually towns more like, they're not really cities, getting some ports as well, which would be good for some fisheries and, and a harbor, you know, so you can build a navy and raid other lands. And from there on, you can pretty much do whatever you want. It's it's mainly consolidating your, your borders here as much as you can, right? So let's get started. Uh, we have the main settlement building, which I'm going to upgrade. And I'm going to get this field building as well for the um, increased food capacity. Because we only start with five. 
I'm going to start recruiting as well. We're in the dead of winter at the moment, so I'm not going to move the army out. I'm not going to recruit any pikemen to begin with. I'm mainly going to focus on these guys, the ambushers, because they're quite they're quite a good unit, actually, um, to not only just hold a position, but also flank around quickly as well. Um, eventually, you'll want to get that pikeman, guys, because they can really hold their ground as well. Um, the only thing about the pikemen is they, they are lower on armor than I would have hoped. So they can't really defend themselves very well against um, against missile fire. So if you, if you throw them in the front line and they start getting uh, under fire, they will crumble <laughs> pretty quickly. So you want to you wanna definitely use them a bit uh, later on, maybe in a few turns. But um, I would more so bank on having just a, a front line you can... Um, what's the word? Uses kind of cannon fodder and 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 use other infantry to flank around and take them out. Ideally, cavalry as well. But we'll get to that. So we're gonna recruit some ambushers, and I'm gonna recruit some longbowmen as well, the dramatic hunters. Maybe a few, but really into the spearmen, and then some cavalry when you can. And then we're. I'm probably gonna go after Ascalculus first, and then Vistula, Rugion. I'm not that worried about. Um. They will likely send an army down, but that's why we're going to be building up the city and getting a second army as well to start build up, to start to build up rather my English. Thank you. Um, and yeah, that's going to be defending the city. We'll we'll secure this border and then we'll go up and take Rugion. That's going to be the plan. Um, but first, we need to take Kasurgis. So that is going to be the focus in terms of technology, guys. Um, again, I mean. I would really go for the civic route. You're going to unlock some decent farming buildings and uh, like tax rates, things like that. You can absolutely go for these guys as well, depending on which way you're going. We're going north, so I'm going to unlock the leather sails first. If you go south, I'd probably recommend this one, the animal imitation, because you get the armor and the weaponsmith, which are quite important buildings if you get uh, iron as a mineral early on. Um, yeah, in terms of public order... We're doing okay. It's in the positive. I'll probably lower that a little bit. Because there's not much of a difference in income. Only 200 coin. And finally, in the next turn, I'm also going to marry my king. So I'm going to marry the king. I'm going to get a wife. And I'm probably going to use her to actually organize games for my settlement and increase public order even more. Um, that's something you can do, remember. So you can go here into, into uh, characters. That's right. And I'll just pick Fridwald as an example. You can use this, organize games, to increase your public order by plus 10, I think, uh, in, the, in the province. So definitely use that. Or you can use uh, the person to, you know, send as a diplomat and try and increase your relations with other factions as well. But anyway, uh, this turn has taken too long. I'm going to probably skip a few turns, guys, as we build up this army. But it won't be too important. Don't worry. And uh, we'll go quite quickly on the offensive against Kasurgas. Um... Actually, before I quit, obviously, I need to uh, do the diplomacy stuff. So let's get that non-aggression pact with the Lugos. Yep, probably have to pay a little bit of money, which is just fine. Hmm. More money that I'd like, maybe. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then... Oh, we've met the Kimbrals already. That's good. Uh, let's try and get a non-aggression with them. You know what? I'm going to leave it for a couple turns because I think they might just come over to my side and be like, yo, know, how about a defensive alliance? So we'll see in that regard. But yeah, just remember, keep an eye on diplomacy, guys. All right. Uh, that's going to be the end of the turn here, I think. So uh, we'll move on to the next one. All right. So they have a decent garrison... In terms of like size, number of troops, and they have a lot of troops as well in terms of the army itself, the Razorbacks. Uh, but we do have a, a very large army as well, so obviously I would go ahead and, and fight this in the battlefield. Um, but you, you are going to have to wait for another siege weapon to be built. And to be honest, you probably want them to sally forth and attack you before you attack the city. So I'm going to wait for that to happen. Uh, in the meantime, I've sent my spy and we've met a few more factions to the west as well. The Frasias and the Ubi. So we are trying to befriend them. I've sent my wife 
to uh, or the king's wife rather to Lugos to improve relations there. I'm going to be sending her now to one of these as well. And uh, we've we've managed to use some of our characters to increase our public order as well. So it's sitting at a nice 43 also. And as you can see, we've got a second army now being built at uh, Lepfordum as well. So once that is a bit stronger, we can combine these forces to start attacking these other factions. But wh what I'm hoping, what I'm hoping really is that they're going to build their armies and they're going to come down and start raiding our lands and we're going to meet them on the battlefield, kill them off, and then just take the city pretty quickly. Um, hopefully that's what will happen, but we'll see. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much this turn at the moment. I've got this spy who's just met the UBI. I'm going to move him, him up over here and just start stealing some food. Why not? Always good to have a bit more food. Deploy your spies to do that, guys. Uh, and we still have a, a decent amount of money. We, we don't have a lot of income, but we can use our uh, our characters here for some more missions, maybe. Uh, let's you know what? Let's organize some more games. Why not? Keep increasing that public order. All right. So I'm expecting these guys to attack us. So let's see what happens. All right, guys, so with that decisive battle, we can now take the city with very minimum casualties, actually. We'll go for a protective stance. That way, we probably won't lose a unit if it's low on um, on individual soldiers. There we go. And we will liberate it. There we go. So we have a nice ally to our south now in the Marcomanos. We're going to move this army now back up towards Lipfordum. And, you know, we're going to move. Yeah, actually, we're going to keep him there. And we're going to... Hold on. Let's give him some skills. And... Let's go for that one. And... That one. And... Yeah, we want to replenish our troops. So I'm going to just combine a couple of these to speed this up. Da, da, da. Maybe this one and this one. And this one and this one. Oop. Oh. Nice. All right. So we can recruit a bit more here as well. And then we will go right on the offensive and move them up towards Ascocolis. See what they've got there. And then in the meantime, we'll keep building this army up and in, in for, for you know that defensive position in Lepfordum. Uh what else? We've got public orders doing well diplomatically. How are things going? So see what I've done here. I've secured the southern flank uh with a decent ally, uh the Lugos. We can actually get trade with this guy as well. Trade agreement and get a payment out of them because we liberated them. So we've got that. Yeah, so that's that's how we're looking. I'm going to let's see. I mean, if these guys declare war, we're gonna we're gonna have some decent factions to wrangle as a uh, as a kind of allies in that war as well. But I'm gonna be focusing more this way towards uh, the Gutones, the Nathanar Valley, take those settlements, and then focus on Rugos when I have um, the second army built up as well. So yeah. That's going to be the end of the turn here, pretty much. Yeah, I don't think there's any skills to be adding here. Yeah, all right. Uh, I'll see you and uh, I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, so this is turn eight and I've moved both my armies against Oscoculus because I found out that they are they've been doing a lot of recruitment, actually. So I'm going to move this army to attack the, the main city, the town. So we can single them out and use the second army, the main army here, to attack the smaller one that's recruiting. So we can take them out pretty quickly. Now yeah, let's just uh, auto-resolve this one. All right. Very good. And now we can focus on the town itself. We'll just move this army back into range. See how the uh, balance is. 
still in their favor. They have just done. They, they have only, they only have a little bit more than we do. Um, so I'm going to wait for them to sally forth against me again, just as we did against Kasurgus. I'm going to just, yeah, keep it on and circle. Let's see if we can get any mercenaries. Nope. None available in the region, which is fine. No worries. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going to wait for them to attack us and then we'll see how that battle goes. I'm going to end the turn here. All right, guys, so the battle is well underway, and as you can see, it's going to be an interesting one. I've got my kind of primary attacking force here all set up in a line, uh, and I think basically I'm going to try and split them off, and this will hopefully take the smaller chunk of the enemy army. They're going to be pushing forward quite quickly, uh, but I've got my reinforcing army also entering the battle now. They're going to be going up on a line on this side, and they're going to be like attacking those infantry that get distracted. Uh, from the flank. So that's what we're going to be trying to do. Uh, and it's going to be a tough one. Like they, they have a lot of decent infantry. They've got some phalanx infantry. Um, they've got uh, they've got a lot of missile infantry as well. And they have they generally have the unit superiority in terms of numbers in this battle. So it's going to be very tough for me to kind of understand the situation because there's so much micromanagement going on in terms of what units are doing. If I can just make sure this line is holding uh, with as minimal effort as possible from my part. I can try and focus on everyone here taking out as many of their units out as possible and then helping the support of this front line from behind, right? So uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Some of their units are already pushing forward to uh, my reinforcing, reinforcing army. They shouldn't be an issue uh, this early in the game. They're kind of going into the meat grinder, which is fine by me. Uh, we've got this enemy force pushing forward as well. It's got, uh, got a nice little cinematic view into what's happening here. So there you have it. They're, uh, they're all pushing forward now. I think they're going to stop actually for a little while, which is a bit weird since they're within my missile range. Uh, but no worries. Got some rainy weather as well for this battle, which I don't usually play. Uh, but I thought, why not? It'd be a bit cinematic. So, yeah, I've got these guys routing pretty quickly. There's one unit that's being a bit stubborn in the middle here. Uh, so trying to take them out as well. Oh, okay, they're they're taking out. My archers did some really decent job with them. I'm just trying to chase these guys down, but it's kind of a mistake, to be honest. If you've got an archer unit, uh, a missile unit kind of retreating... Don't go after it. Wait for your missile units to come up and then take it out from range. It's a lot easier. You risk these guys getting um, attacked from behind if they're running back as well as I'm trying to do here. You see what's happening. Uh, but my main worry actually is, is the uh, enemy reinforcing force. So they've come up from here, this red line here, and they're kind of committing some decent spear infantry on this side here. That's what they're going to be doing. So I need to get into formation Get a nice line going. Get my missile uh, units in line as well to start attacking them from range. The enemy over on this side is being a little weird as well. Kind of going around and about. Not sure what they're doing. But eventually, they're going to they're gonna start attacking uh, the front line here also. So it'll be an interesting fight to watch on this side to see what happens. Overall, I mean, it's a decent battle. Like it, It's the more interesting type of battle that you can get versus the AI. Having two armies attacking from various uh, directions. And it's tough to micromanage, you know? Um, there are a lot of units to take care of. A lot of horsemen to uh, direct as well. And it's, yeah, it's a bit of a tussle. So I'm sending my general around this flank to see if I can get him around this side of the army over here to try and support uh, the attack, the kind of tussle, the conflict going over on this side of the uh, of the map. Um, but I mean, overall, it's it's going pretty well. I'm sending these guy guys up uh, to either flank these guys or support the main fight over here, since we've got some. I mean, we've got some light infantry units. You know, they're very light. I don't know how well they're going to do against um, these Germanic tribesmen. So I want to make sure they're reinforced as much as possible. Uh, I've already done some decent headway to attack some of their infantry and take them out. So these guys are going to be running after the missile unit. Again, don't do that. I don't know why I did that this time in this battle, but no worries. These guys are going to be focusing on this front line here. 
we we outnumber them, which is good. But I mean, in terms of equipment, I think we're a little bit slightly out uh, qualified in terms of quality wise uh, unit per unit here. So we'll see what happens there. I've kind of tried to harass the enemy on this side with my uh, cav units uh, to no avail, to be honest. They've got some spearmen that are going after them, the, backed by uh, missile units as well. So it's a bit bit of a weird commitment there that I did. But the enemy has started to attack the front line here. So um, it's going to be an interesting fight from this side because it's actually quite even. I've got a nice line of infantry, but they're under attack by missiles. Uh, they've got some decent spear infantry that will come up against them as well. And it's, it's just a bit of an even fight in terms of what's going on here. I have to keep an eye on what's going on. But, no worries, the general is in the back, he's flanking around. He's gonna do some damage to some of these melee units in the front line. I'm quite worried about this side, to be honest. I know I outnumber them. Missile units are doing some decent damage. Uh, but some of my units are breaking. Um, like that red one there, while others are doing some decent kind of flanking maneuvers as well. It's just a bit of a tough situation, you know? Um, but so far so good. Doing some nice flanking cav units here as well. Surprise and delight the enemy. Well, not delight, but you know what I mean. Um, delight me at least. Uh, and there, hopefully this guy's going to break very soon. Um, general is committed getting some nice melee bonuses to uh, our friendly units nearby as well to try and attack and take them out. This general unit has noticed, obviously, so he's going to try and attack these guys from behind. Not a very good thing to have to deal with, obviously. So yeah, we're all, we're all a bit stretched thin. Just a little bit stretched thin for my liking. I'm going to just fast forward a little bit to get to a more juicy moment. Front line isn't moving too much, but on this side, more and more of their units are breaking, which is good for me. My units here are breaking, unfortunately, which is not great to see. Um, but at least we're doing some damage some way. These guys, I, I totally forgot about, but they're going to be taking out this missile unit now. And then actually they're going to go around into this flank. They're going to try and relieve some pressure on this side. Uh, I've decided with the general unit that their missile units are going to be the priority. So I'm taking this guy and I'm attacking these guys pretty Head on. A swift kind of charging maneuver. Look at them run. Yeah. Some decent attacking force going in there. Taking them out. He's basically going to be taking a lot of them out before the general notices, which is fine by me. But I've lost a few units. And over here, I'm quite stretched thin, actually. I didn't even quite clock it how many units I've lost on this side. I've lost maybe two or three, um, which is unfortunate. But I'm winning the battle overall. These guys are breaking. I'm going to be able to shift these units here over to uh, flank around these guys. I've got some units penetrating my front line here, which is not ideal. Um, so I need to plug the gap, essentially. My general's doing some decent work on their missile units. They've got some breaking units on this side as well. Messed up with that cav, unfortunately, but no worries. Um, and they've, they've, I mean, they've committed some decent units on the flank over on this side as well, which is a bit worrying. So it's an interesting match. You know, things are going a little bit wrong, which is fine. Because overall, you're, you're, you're basically, it doesn't matter how many units really you lose in the battle here. Because you're not really losing them, you know, that they're, they're kind of, they're routing. But they, they still have, like, look at this, they still have about 50% of the force remaining, which is fine. Um, as long as after the battle, at least 50% of them are still alive and we can replenish them pretty quickly, you know? So these guys are doing a, a decent job of now creating a, a nice attacking force into these guys. I'm losing another unit, but that's okay. I'm trying to order some forces around to flank around uh, to do some more damage there. I'm basically using these guys as cannon fodder at this point to just hold the, the line against these units and, and wait for my cav units over here to be able to support them from behind. Um, they're a bit tired, though. That's the only thing. So I need to wait for these guys to be a bit more um, active rather than winded. Uh, and, yeah, so it's it's a bit of a tough choice, to be honest. These guys are, are routing. These guys are routing as well. It's a bit tough. But 
at least on this side of the battle, things are going well. I'm going to re uh, fast forward a little bit here to see what happens. General gets committed into this side of the battle. Do some nice morale damage, but obviously they're up against some decent units here with the general unit. So we need to pull them back, uh, which is what I'm going to be doing. Um, so we pull them back and we decide, I decide basically I need to commit them over here. If we can relieve the pressure on this side, finally, then these guys can flank around, take out that flank while these guys finish these units off and attack the general. So hopefully that's what's going to happen. It's a bit of a close one, actually, in terms of how I'd like to have this, uh, how, how I would have liked this battle to have gone. But no worries. We've got breaking units on this flank. These guys are shifting around to support this side of the battle. I've got units that have um, come back from routing, so I can commit them into the fight as well. My general has done a really, a really decent job of already routing one of their units, so he's going to go in and do the rest do some nice damage to the rest of these units as well. They're going to flank around now very soon. Let's see what's happening on this side. I've got some units that are breaking. Other units that are just kind of keeping like enemy units distracted. You know? They don't need to be into the main fight. They just need to keep some units distracted while the main force defeats the enemy. That's the idea. So that's what's happening there. They've got some units that are pretty much just breaking. No worries. And these guys are going to start moving forward towards the enemy general. I mean, this would have gone a lot more differently if I had taken the enemy general out uh, right from the beginning. Uh, but I didn't do that, unfortunately. Uh, which is fine. You know, at the end of the day, if you have this kind of advantage over the enemy, even late battle, you're, you're winning. So, uh... General's moving forward now. I'm moving my cav around so that these guys can attack him from all sides and I can just use him to hammer and anvil the shit out of this general. So that's what's happening here. There he goes. He starts shifting towards the infantry. These guys are doing a decent job of holding off these infantry as well, the light spear infantry, which are a lot more um, effective than I thought they would be. There goes my general now into the fight, into the enemy general's back. I'm going to just pull him back for another charge now as well. But he starts breaking. And if the general starts breaking a little bit here as well, then the others will start breaking as well. So if I just fast forward a little bit, you'll see those morale penalties coming into play. The superiority. And the end of the battle so it was quite a good battle i mean we did have a lot of losses here but it was interesting and that's what matters um you want to have some fun with your battles don't you so yeah we're going to continue now with the campaign all right guys so after that very interesting battle ascoculus is pretty much undefended we've uh, destroyed a lot of them they took a lot of heavy casualties we lost a lot of men actually as well uh, unfortunately, but that's okay. Um, we're going to take the city from them and start replenishing our troops and start focusing on the next settlement. I think uh, the gods have blessed us as we've we've just had a newborn child as well. Yay! We've destroyed this faction. Look at that. Yeah, we've, we've taken a lot of heavy casualties. Let's, um, let's see here. Allocate our skills first. Uh, let's public order would be good. Yeah, let's upgrade that. This guy can get some skills as well. All right, so... We've got a lot of casualties. I think we're going to just replace these guys with some more units. Oh, okay. No worries. All good. Highlighted all of them by accident. All right. So we've got 15 units here. Let's get a few more. Ooh, King's Guard. Hmm. We've got a decent amount of income as well, which is nice. Actually, hold on. What kind of building do we have here? Hmm. Interesting. 
That's why they had a nice garrison. All right. Good, good. We don't need to focus on building one of our own military buildings. Um, we've already got one. So we've got, we've got some nice unlocked units here with those buildings. And we kind of want to go the middle way. You know, you don't want to get anything too cheap now because you've, you've got this unlocked. You don't have that much of an income, but you have a big coffer. So let's see. I'm going to go for a couple of these with this army. Yeah. And then ideally I'd want them to keep replenishing, but no worries. It's, it's winter. So we can take a little break here from assaulting and attacking other cities. I think the, uh, hold on. Let's look at public order here. The, yeah, the conquest is quite, Hi, so we can increase the tax level even more to make up the difference. And then hopefully once these armies are ready, we can start going after Vistula. All right. Uh, I think that's going to be the end of the turn here. We can get a trade agreement now. So I'll just do that really quickly as well. Wrangle a payment out of them. They're not very keen on it. Cool, cool, got that done. Oh, we've got some nice relations with Rugos. I wonder if they'll join a confederation. They won't. All right, no worries. You are my next target after Vistula, so all good. I think that's the end of the turn here, guys. So uh, let's move on to the next one. All right, guys. So our sights are set on Vistula. We've uh, moved our army up into their lands, and they don't have a big army. They're defending, actually. I think they're at war. They must be with a few other factions. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, so they're at war with the Rugos and the ISTI to the east as well. I'm guessing they have an army going towards the ISTI in a city. I think they have a few cities here. They may have one undefended, in which case they'll be attacking. And that gives me an opportunity to go up against them and take this town right under from their noses. So let's take this, take this out. They have a decent garrison army, actually. Very, very nice army. Um, and you know what? I'm probably going to play this on the ground, but I'm not going to... Oh, well, maybe I'll show you guys uh, the footage. We'll see how this one goes. It might be an interesting battle. I want to play this on the ground. All right, so as you can see, the casualty rate was a lot lower than what it was uh, saying with auto-resolve. So all good there. I'm going to loot the town because our public order in the province is pretty high. So we'll take Vistula that way. We'll have a much bigger coffer now. You know, our public order is really high, actually. So we don't, we don't really need to worry about that at the moment. Uh, but I am going to recruit a bit more in this army as well. Um, so what have we here? Do we have anything new? I don't think we do. Um, let's get a few more spearmen, I think. That's what we'd want here now. Um, I think we have some better units than what we've been using ambusher wise i'm gonna go for these guys the proven spearmen a few more units of those and this army should be good to go as well vistula has a few buildings that need repairing as well oh horse pens oh i cannot build right i need to repair it first All right let's repair that and see if we can get the horse pens actually let's see if that's a tech we need to unlock Nope, it isn't. Cool. So we'll get that really quickly as well, which would be nice. And then we'll swing these armies around towards Rugion and take this final town to uh, secure the province. That's kind of our goal here in this campaign. From a political point of view, I think we're doing okay. Nothing too much to worry about. Uh, maybe we can gather some support. How are we doing? Well, we're doing all right. I mean, you can if you want to. Yeah, why not? Let's gather some support. Good, good, good. That's given us some more bonus, which is really nice. Our loyalty is kind of low with the Council of Chieftains, so I'll kind of... I'll th I think I'll secure their loyalty for a little bit. Otherwise, though... All good. Let's send a diplomat as well. Uh, let's send the diplomat to the ISTI. 
I don't know why. Why not? I mean, they are to our east. They are actually quite big, um, come to think of it. it. Looks like the Gutones did take a city from them. Unless that's just the standing army. Yeah, I think it's just the standing army, um, which is fine. So we have the... Look at that. I mean, we have some really nice allies to our east. I mean, the Rugos are quite friendly with us, but I'd rather have that town uh, than not. So I'm going to go up against them and take that city as well. They are at war with the Kimbras. So by doing that, I will make an ally with the Kimbras as well. Uh, but they do have a defensive pact with the Frazias. So that might just draw them into the war as well. We'll see what happens there. <clears throat> Let's get the army up towards them and uh, and see how the rest of the factions respond to our our attack. But yeah, cool. All right, I think that's the end of the turn. We've done some really good work here to unite the province. And uh, we've got this very nice ally to our south with Kasurgus. So yeah, this is kind of like the ideal start for me uh, as a Germanic faction. Uh, let's see what happens next. Do I have to give this guy skills? No, I don't. All right. All right, guys. So it's turn 19, and we have a bit of a stalemate here. As you can see, the Rugos have actually met our armies out in their lands. So we have the Lone Fighters and the Dragon Slayers out to meet us here. And uh, it's, it's interesting. I think what I might do is engage this army first. Take it out, because I have uh, actually number superiority here. So I'll take it out. Come around here and attack this one uh, and be reinforced as well. So we can take this one out and then strike at the city itself. So uh, let's see what we can do here. We've got allies as well. And they joined them, interestingly. Uh, but look here. So we've got a massive advantage. Let's take this army out of the equation. Oh, we'll enslave them. Why not? And oh, they're not reinforced by that other army in range as well. So we'll just destroy them right off the bat. Good for us. Axe through the head, which is a weird animation. CA, come on. Um, so they are taken out. Got some nice skills here as well that we'll upgrade. So we get the war cry and maybe I'll do the melee. Yeah, melee defense skill. That would be good. And then let's try and see if we can recruit some mercenaries. Look at that. Nice. Got a couple more mercenaries because we've got the money. We can do it. And we'll attack this army here. Oh, look at that. They retreat. Uh, Which can't... I mean... Try and go after them, but Rugion has a massive garrison. It's probably not a good idea. I think I might just wait until this army can move out as well. In the next turn and strike uh at them in the, in the last turn of the video essentially uh we are running out of money but we have a massive coffer we've we've managed to got uh get some nice uh non-aggression pacts and trade agreements with these other factions now as well our eastern borders are really secure which is really good to see once we have this final city we'll have the province secured and we can even move more west we can take out the heroscos we're in it we're in a war with the frezias as well uh, and we can make an ally in the Kimbras to support us in our efforts to start pushing more and more towards the west. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, I think I'm going to end the turn. I am indeed. And we'll see you in the final turn of the video. Alright guys, so this is turn 20. And we have the settlement besieged, Rugion, ready to strike. I've got it uh, under siege. We've got some reinforcements as well. And uh, it's, it's going to be a tough one. It's a very big battle. We've taken some attrition due to disease as well, unfortunately. Um, but we're going to go for it. All right. So it looks like we actually have a pretty big uh, advantage over them. The casualty rate is very high. Um, so you know what, guys? We're going to end this video on a massive battle. I haven't shown you all the video, all the, all the battles in this video. Um, so it'd be worth... And like it'd be worth fighting this one and showing you how I would do it. So let's let's go for it. All right, guys. So the final battle has begun in our video here as the Suebi in our first 20 turns. We're going to be taking this settlement to unite the province and get a very nice kind of a good solid base to be able to expand out from. Uh, so I've, I've basically grouped up in this battle 
my infantry in three groups. These guys are going to be approaching this uh, little uh, choke point, really, I guess. These guys into this choke point and the bulk, really, into this choke point. Because this is going to be the main area of the battle here. Um, they've got some naval units, but I'm not re really worried about them. My reinforcing army is going to be the more interesting one. These guys are going to split off into this direction here to try and flank around the main force. A couple more units to support the front line and each choke point as well. And a few units here to flank around on this side. I'm going to try and get my cavalry around here as well for some nice charges. Um, but that's essentially the battle. We're going to try and... I mean, it's a pretty even battle from a number perspective. Uh, pretty even. I think it's like 7,000 versus 8. Uh, they have a slight superiority on us in terms of numbers. Um, but it's an interesting one because it's a, it's a settlement battle without any kind of fortifications, uh, which works because I really don't like dealing with towers. It's something that CA really need to work on, in my opinion. Um, and we're going to go right for an open battle in these choke points. It should be a very interesting very kind of performance heavy battle as well as they all kind of bunch up uh so we'll see what happens all these guys are moving up to the front line into these choke points i'm gonna just fast forward here to see how the enemy responds so as you can see a lot of them are moving into this side a few of them are just stationary waiting to see what my guys here do which is fine uh these guys are going to start moving forward these guys are moving around as well as these guys kind of retreat uh, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Basically, the enemy units here are kind of going back. Uh, so I'm, I'm committing these units into the front line on this side of the choke point to attack them. Keep them busy. Keep them off the, uh, the, other, the other choke points here, which is fine. Reinforcing army still trying to catch up. Let's try and fast forward here. Oh, yeah, that's slow. Because it's such... There are so many units here. There you go. It should be easier to fast forward on this side. Maybe not. Okay, no worries. So, yes, uh, we've got a lot of enemy units to deal with here. But the good thing, which is something you have to remember if you're going to play battles like this, is I've got a lot of missile units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine missile units. And they're going to basically use that, again, that focus shot uh, ability here to try and rain down absolute hell on this one area. Lots and lots of enemy soldiers going into this front line. And they're they're basically going into the meat grinder here. I've got some decent units, some berserkers, uh, some light spear infantry going to be holding the line while these guys, these spear infantry, come around. The ambushers ambush them and... Uh, these guys defeat the infantry uh, holding these choke points so they can push in from this flank as well into the town center. So that's what's going to happen here. They're bunching up quite a bit, which works for me since I have missile superiority. Some of their units already are looking a bit not great, losing decisively, which is good for me. I probably should have used the berserkers in the flank, actually, but no worries. Making some progress here. Units here retreating. They're going to start pushing into the front line. This lone unit, the melee uh, infantry, Germanic warriors, going to be uh, taken out very soon as well. Got my cavalry in position. They're going to be moving in. They're going to be moving in. I've got medium infantry as well pushing forward into this flanking front line, which uh, will start getting into the town center very soon. I've got a breaking unit, but that's okay. They, they were all already quite low in terms of uh, number of infantry as well. I would like to fast forward, but it is, it is a bit slow, unfortunately. All right. So, yeah, that's essentially what's happening. They've, they've, the AI basically committed a lot of their troops on this side, hoping, I guess, that they would break through and start attacking my missile units. But uh, yeah, clearly that's a mistake. You can't commit all these forces into one choke point. You really need to cover all of your choke points in a much more effective fashion. So I've got infantry moving in from this side. I've got this infantry about to take out these uh, medium warriors. I've got my cavalry who will start coming in and taking out these missile 
units as well that they have in their back line. They are using some infantry to support the other choke points, but it's not going to be enough. I've got these spear infantry now coming in from the flank, which is good to see. Not great to watch with these lags, unfortunately. But all good. These guys are going to go straight in, stick into the fight. Some nice ranged shots to begin with. And then harass the enemy. They've got their general committed as well. So it should be swift, easy pickings from this side for these units. We've got a cav unit that's unfortunately retreating, but that's okay. These guys are going to just come in and they've got some really low morale anyway. These guys are going to defeat them pretty quickly. And we're starting to see basically the fruits of using these missile units as effectively as possible. So these guys are, they've been, they've been routing maybe two or three units in the middle here. Which is really good to see. This medium melee infantry is doing a really good job of holding my guys up, which is not great. But these guys are now getting into the fray. Cav units now pushing forward as well into the into the back line of the battle. Oof, 20 FPS. That's not good. Oop, there we go. All right, more and more of the enemy units are breaking. Some of my missile units will start running out of ammo soon as well. I didn't even clock this at the time, but the enemy had this lone King's Guard, a, melee, uh, a medium phalanx infantry unit coming in from the back. I didn't even notice until the last few minutes of the battle. But as you can see, more and more of the enemy infantry is breaking on these flanks, and I've got what like maybe 15 units now on like this side of the battle coming into the town and moving in i'm using my general and his abilities now to inspire my men and have him committed to the missile units here it's a bit of a risk actually because they've still got some spearmen uh they've got a lot of units here still uh so it is a risk to commit your general like this but he does end up actually taking out like three missile units here which is more than i can ask really i'm gonna i'm gonna do that and start pulling him back and we're gonna get these infantry to start pushing in into this flank and causing some trouble more and more of their units are breaking on this side as well now look at that missile the missile fire alone is causing a hell of a lot of damage on these units from afar and as i said those those lone naval infantry uh units they've been defeated so these guys are going to start piling in <clears throat> into the battle causing a bit of trouble into the flanks here all these white flags retreating units which is really good to see and yeah i mean this is a classic example of an open kind of open choke point ish settlement attack you overwhelm a few of these choke points to be able to commit your your infantry units into their back line and, and surround them. That's what you want to do. Whatever battle you play, really, in DEI, you want to be able to surround the enemy. That is the most effective way <clears throat> of playing these battles and minimizing your casualties, you know? These guys are going in. More and more of their units are retreating. Interestingly, they have this, like, one missile unit that holds these guys for a long time. I don't know how. They're just very light missile infantry units, but somehow my guys don't want to... <laughs> Don't want to route them. So more and more of my guys are getting into the town center. More and more of their infantry are, are getting these morale penalties. I mean, there's a massive gap here, as you can see. Mainly because of my missile units just hammering down from afar. Causing some really good damage. And in the meantime, these guys are slowly, slowly creeping up on my units. All right, now I've got these uh, units in formation. They're going to be pushing in into the battle from this side. Try to take this town center from the enemy. These medium infantry units. The Harris Cause Swordsmen. 
They may be few in number, but they are definitely of good quality. All right, here they come, piling into the battle. These guys doing some very, very nice damage now from the flanks. Look at all these, all these infantry units retreating. I've, there you go. I finally clocked that this unit is approaching. So I'm pulling my infantry back a bit, pulling these missile units back. I have a few missile units that still have ammunition here. So what I'm going to do, because this is a nice, very nice phalanx infantry unit. I'm going to be attacking with missile units from both sides. I'm trying to whittle them down a little bit. And actually, I'm going to use some of these units to come around and support that attack. But in the meantime, in the kind of heat of the battle, I've got these nice medium infantry units now flanking and taking out their units from this side. These guys have finally defeated that lone missile unit, so they're going to pile in as well. There they come here. Loads and loads of forces, loads of bloody rampaging fighting happening on this side of the, of the battle. Lots of retreating units the general is standing though so i need to in a minute i'm going to just order these guys to attack the general only cause him to retreat which should hopefully just cause all of, all the rest of these units to um retreat as well so there you go I've, I've got these missile units now attacking on this side as well they're not taking that many casualties but it's okay they are forward facing at the moment Um, all right. I think I've just lost my audio. All right. Sorry. I lost my audio though there for a second, which was not ideal, but I'm back. So yes, the battle progresses. We have the enemy surrounded. I'm inspiring my men by keeping the general quite close by using those abilities. These guys are now pulling back to flank around this phalanx unit who is now under heavy missile fire from two directions so it's not ideal for any unit really to be under fire from so many directions the general is now suffering casualties it's shaken morale is low these guys are doing a decent job of holding this flank at bay but it's not going to last for for very much longer really keeping this guy busy until my uh melee units can catch up to him uh, that's just a, a decent job of of surrounding the enemy here that's what this battle is really about if you're uh if you're new to dei or rome 2 generally this is kind of the way you want to fight this battle surround them with as many units as possible cause some decent casualties from range and uh basically lower their morale as much as possible well, look at that these guys attacking from ranged as well Causing some nice casualties. And they're breaking. I mean, I didn't even need these melee units to attack them. Because, like, in infantry from range on two sides is enough. And that is the end of this battle, guys. And we did it. We uh, sustained only a thousand men in casualties. And we, I mean, we killed over 6,000 of them. Which is huge. It's, it's absolutely massive. So, a really nice battle to end this this video on let's uh continue now and see what happens on the campaign all right guys look at that casualty rate i mean we've only lost a thousand men against all of these guys that's just ridiculous uh but yeah so we've taken rugion once and for all you know we're gonna loot the city as well because obviously our public order is super high it's the terminator it's like my number one priority but we've taken the city and finally, we've united the province. Bit of a sanitation problem, but no worries. Uh, I'm going to convert this. Once we repair this, we're going to convert it into a harbor. And yeah, you know what? Oh, actually, uh, th there's an amber resource here. So that would be really good to have right off the bat as well. We're going to develop that building here. Um, but yeah, so that is it, guys. We've got Rugion we have skills to allocate no we don't um yeah so that's that's turn 20 guys and 
we've managed to unite the province. That that was the goal here. So let's look at the, the map view. We've managed to take the rest of these cities in this province. We've got a very nice southern secure border with four other factions here that uh, view us quite favorably. We've got a few potential enemies in the Boudini and the Heriscaws, so that will likely be uh, your next kind of focus if you go down this route of securing your province. Um, but to be honest, guys, I think I think this is the best bet, really. You have this northern border you don't really have to worry about. You've got some very nice allies that you can, you can probably confederate eventually uh, to grow your borders even more over on this side. Um, and you can, you can focus your attention on the west, start expanding out west even more, taking out these factions here, and basically not really coming up against Rome. Uh, you want to avoid that as much as possible. You want to have these uh, settlements to grow your income even more, because it's, it's quite low right now, but um, that's only because uh, you've got these you've got these armies that are, that are quite heavy um, actually when you think about it you can probably get rid of some of the mercenaries that you've hired to be able to succeed in this campaign uh, so maybe get rid of these guys and these guys as well yeah why not because you, you've got some really decent units you can hire uh, not hire you know recruit through your uh, province now Let's have a look, actually. Yeah, look at that. We've got some nice cavalry units as well. Uh, it's all kind of like... This, this is the ideal start, in my opinion, for the Suebi. Basically, making sure you've got the province under your control. Getting that increased tax rate would be, ni would be nice. Uh, growing your cities to get even more like buildings that give you more recruitment options. You know, Investing in those farms as well to make sure your food is in the surplus. And then... And then the world's your oyster. You know, you can you can expand out west, taking out the Harris Gauze. Um I mean, if you want, you can go against the the friendly relations that you've made here and, and go out east as well. But that would that would probably be what I would do from here on out. I would expand out west, take out Tullifordum, which is a very nice city to have out here as well. Uh probably want to consolidate this province as well. So you might want to eventually take out Alibu. And, and go further west as well. Totally up to you guys. But this is how I would do my first 20 turns as the Suebi. I've added in a, a few nice little battles. I hope you enjoyed as well. Um, but this is the end of our video here. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something new about how to go about it with a Germanic faction. Um, and, and a faction actually that you start off with one settlement as well. Because it can be tough. Um, you don't know what the AI might do. They might all just suddenly declare war on you, which is a tough decision, a uh, tough kind of situation to be in. Um, but yeah, so that's that's been uh, this ten, uh, this first twenty turns guide to the Suebi, guys. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Uh, give it a like if you have. Drop any thoughts or questions in the comments section below. Let me know how you've enjoyed it. Let me know what faction you want to see next. And thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.